A reading from the Gospel of Luke. There were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans who were, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. For those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. There's two tragedies in this text. Uh, the first is an intentional tragedy. It was by design, where Pilate has, has some religious uh, Jews killed, and the sacrifices that they brought to the temple, the blood of those sacrifices are mingled with theirs, which is a form of desecration of bodies. The other tragedy is an accident. A tower falls and 18 are died. The tower was probably along the edge of Jerusalem. And I can imagine the conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples and with others being, why do these things happen? And the prevailing idea at this time, and I think it still is today, is that whatever happens to another person, you can take that as evidence of their life of what happens to them being evidence of their sinfulness or their blessing. I'm not absolutely sure this is the case. I've heard this used many times. Pat Robertson recently blamed the earthquake on Haiti on the sins of the Haitians. After Hurricane Katrina, it was common to hear people saying that the sins of New Orleans were the reason why New Orleans suffered what it did that the hurricane was a way of cleansing the city. But I think Jesus is going a little bit of a way in what he says to make us rethink the idea of divine retribution. When he says, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all of the Galileans? No, they weren't. I'm not sure that things actually work that way, and I think that Jesus gives us a few other examples of why it doesn't, why divine retribution doesn't work. Uh, in the Gospel of John, as he's walking with disciples down the road, he's asked by his disciples why a particular blind man is blind. Was it his sin or the sins of his father? Jesus rejects both of those. And the very idea that the righteous are not supposed to suffer for their sins or are supposed to suffer in general is counteracted by the cross itself. I think what Jesus is trying to do is separate divine retribution from the idea of repentance because repentance is still necessary. And the question then becomes, well, why bother to repent then? If we're not rewarded on this side, nor are we punished, what's the point? I think the point is that Christians are called to a harder way of living. We are called to do what is right because it is right, not because we fear punishment or because we're just told to do so.
I think that what we get from this in following the right way is that we're supposed to follow what it is we've been told to do by God to make the world a better place and in doing so we're supposed to do so without fear of retribution but instead with love the same type of love that he projects towards us.